Hey, what's up? We're just playing uh, Spring Marathon. Doing like the super late join, as I usually do. In 6,383rd place, which means it might take a while for me to win this, but I'm pretty sure I can win it. Just have to play some good moves. Also, invent a time machine and go back and, you know, that. But um, let's focus on the good moves part for now. Bishop takes f7. Might work. That doesn't work. Because here I get the free pawn. With check. Um, I'm hoping for bishop e2 or queen e2. And then I could start liquidating some... Well, so if he gives up the d5 square, my queen could always run away safely to d5. Otherwise, I have to like move my queen to like f5 or e4 or something to get out of here. Not really looking forward to doing queen h5 here, so... Um, okay, that works. Uh, that also covers c1 against my possible shenanigans there. Um, you know what? I'm being greedy, greedy again, because this is fun. Yes, it's what got me in trouble last time, but that was a different game. Yep, b2, hanging. Everything hanging. So, I've successfully collected two pawns, and now I get to play an endgame. Because um, chess games get to be played out, uh, except when they don't. Um, yeah, so I collected a little bit more than two pawns there. Now I'm up two pawns and an exchange. And what say you about tripling my pawns here? We got the Irish pawns. Uh, they're so strong because they cover all the light and the dark squares. Um, the only downside is that um, they're easily attacked in one direction. Um, yeah, Rook E4 probably isn't as exciting as it looks. Alright, fine. Whatever. Um. <clears throat> there we go. That's better. All right, let's sack one of the pawns. Yeah, well, it's and I appreciate if people didn't commit during the game, only because these are rated games, um, so leeches wouldn't look favorably upon that. But yes, you're right that stuff's getting trapped. Like as it stands right now, that knight is actually trapped. Um, there's nothing the knight can do to get out. It's just I can't happen to attack it immediately. So we get to play out this fun game where my opponent can't do anything, and I probably can find something to do. Um, here we go. Let's just do that. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether I go rook b3 or rook a5, so we'll do rook a5. Actually, it stops knight c5. So, rook a5 might be more accurate. Alright, and so we just win a knight. And. fun. Wow, he didn't even try, like, the whole king h4 silliness that he could have tried there. Okay. Well, we'll just play this out. <laughs> I'm not in any grand hurry here. I don't know why he thinks I would be. Alright, there we go. Welcome back. So, yep, today we're just playing the Spring Marathon. Um, we joined about 22 hours late, so chances are not good for my winning the tournament. But we'll still give it, uh, I don't know. 
the old college try, I think is the phrase. Um, all right, so I've got a dominating center and no weaknesses whatsoever, other than all the weaknesses. So if he castles, then I can't stop him, but otherwise I have bishop a3 on the table. Um, all right, so h7 is the target. Um, f6 is the other target. So let's see what I can do to hit some targets. Let's do some target practice. f7 is a target. Actually, h7 is kind of a target, um, depending how you look at it. So... Oh, he just grabbed a pawn. Um, yeah, no, he definitely earned that. Uh, I should have been paying a little bit more attention there. Thankfully, this seems to work out. <laughs> All right, so I'll just retreat the bishop backward a bit. Definitely not set up any kind of uh, trick here. All right. And as long as I don't get my queen skewered to my rook, I'll be fine. I'm just debating um, to put my queen in front of or behind my other pieces here. Um, so without giving up the e3 square. OK. <laughs> I mean, that looks aggressive. Is it aggressive? Maybe. Kind of depends what else is going on in the position. All right, your move. Good luck. <laughs> uh, all right, I could take the bishop. Oh, that, I should, rather, because I'm in check. All right, so... Yeah, that shows you just how wake I am at the moment, but we'll get there. Just give it time. All right. Woo! Vita 1600. Man, these people who are playing in the 22nd hour of the tournament are a bit feisty. Uh, they don't go down without a fight. Um, now, bear in mind that when I play Blitz Chess, typically, I play with an increment, so the fact that I'm playing without one is kind of hugely relevant here. Um, it's kind of a big problem that I don't have an increment, um, so if I end up blowing the game either on time or to some stupid tactic, that's my excuse. Um, I'm sticking with it. So where's the dumb tactics that's going to ruin my day? I'm waiting for it. It will crop up when I least expect it. Um, hmm. If only I could just take on d4 there. That'd be so cool. Um, but he's got it covered. Well, that got tactical in a hurry. Um, I guess he just moves his king. Still, this is like way more than either of us ever dreamed of here. Um, yeah, I don't have any idea what's going on anymore. Let's exchange queens, and I'm giving up a pawn to do so. Um, I need to get my king out of various forks. Uh, that did not play out, and is not playing out at all how I anticipated. Uh, I'm now simply lost. So I'll try to make it interesting. 
Oh, wow. That was clever. Yeah, like I said, time's going to be a huge problem. Uh, or like I predicted, rather. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. Oh! Oh, what? Well, I'm bookmarking that anyway. I'll take it. Um, I will leave it there, because I don't know what more I can say about that. I have my excuse lined up. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Uh, did I need an excuse? Probably not. Jeez. Holy crap. Well, that's probably not going to happen in a long time. <laughs> um, now, that said, uh, players of that caliber aren't always exceptional at Blitz. So it's possible that... Like, because we're doing a marathon and because everything that's involved here and it's a blitz game, um, possibly that might not be representative of that player's best play. Just putting that out there that, like, that doesn't suddenly mean that I'm titled or something like that. Um, even though this is kind of cool. Um, yeah, no, I saw this coming. This is cool. All right, let's just go back. Yeah, that's definitely liberating, playing with that on. I, The more I'm playing with it, the more strongly I recommend everybody use it. Because um, otherwise you don't get those interesting games. But wow. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, now, of course, there's no way I can move the pieces fast enough there. But still. The fact that, like, hypothetically, if I could move the mouse just a little bit faster, maybe I had a chance at holding that. But probably not, because I was down 20 seconds. Uh, like, if I could move, uh, like our friend uh, Penguin, G-I-M, is that how he calls himself? So I could move as fast as Penguin there. Uh, I could maybe pull it off. But, you know... Um, yeah, I think he just relaxed a bit toward the end. Like, most of that game was not anywhere near equal. I did not come anywhere close to deserving uh, a draw there. So... Let's not overstate that result uh, at all. So I'm observing that I'm about to get really cramped, so I'm going to exchange some material. So yeah, it's a good thing I streamed this, because otherwise we wouldn't have caught that. Oh, why did... Oh, right, he hit my piece. That's why I took. Like, if he didn't play h3, I should have just kept the pin, but I had to move my bishop somewhere. Um, here. Nobody expects that move. It's actually decent. It looks horrendous. Um, but I kind of control e4. Um, which he immediately contests, and I contest his contention of. So, yeah. If I control the center, then... Uh, the fact that I've got this dark square weakness isn't so relevant. Um, and if he plays G th or F3, I play knight G3. And there you go. This tends to happen... Uh, fatigue tends to happen when you're late in a tournament. So, 
All right, let's take that from the 1300. Sometimes it's hard to tell what a player's strength is versus their rating. Um, like, that was a really solid game, minus the two blown tactics in a row there. Um, strategically, that player had a solid grasp of what was going on. It's just... Um, I mean, yes, I weaseled my way back to equality, so... I had that going for me, but... Um, Alright, so this... This is how... Wait, no. I confused my lines. Knight a5 is a thing in a different line. It doesn't work here. Um, hmm. That's a problem. Okay. Let's find a way out of this problem. This is bad. Because then he does bishop h5. Or, well, no, because my knight actually covers that. So he has to do, like, bishop takes knight first. Um, or that. Um, now, how do I make this confusing? Uh, I can't give up the e5 square. So uh, let's try this. Also covering h5. If I remember right, though, the refutation of this somehow involves, like, knight... Well, you can't do knight g5 here. Um, yeah, something strange has taken place. Not sure what. Let me just verify I got my chat window set up right here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I kind of put that together in a hurry, but it does show up correctly, so very nice. Um, well, this is strange. Nope, not going to walk into a fork. At least not that one. Um, hmm... This is a problem. Uh, everything's bad here. Um, all right, I'm going to try to tuck my king away here on g7. Well, I wasn't going to spend a tempo moving the bishop, but now I've been asked to. So now I'll take care of it. Um, okay. I don't get that. Um, granted, this double pawn thing isn't much at all, but I'll take it over nothing. Nothing is worse, uh, or rather, uh, this could have been worse than it is, so I'll take whatever chances I can get here. All right, double my pawns, see if I care. Part of the reason I don't care is that I don't think he's going to take both my bishop and my knight. And that if we have either of those two imbalances, then maybe I can stir up some kind of trouble here. Um, also, I've got knight a5 on the table now. So, yeah, now he reacts, as do I. And I have stuff coming. So... I hope he's got a plan, for his sake, because um, I'll just be playing my idea, and we'll see what his idea is. If he does knight takes, I have to address uh, the queen f7 check threat idea. Um, what have I missed? Where is the lethal blow? I'm sure it's here somewhere. I'm going to mute this so it doesn't keep ringing. Oh, what's this about? Ah. Got a message. I'll have to check that later. So. Um, maybe I didn't miss anything? But if I did, it's got to be pretty critical here, because, like, oh, there it is. All right. 
Um, do I have rookie eight? Because rookie eight looks cute as heck. And if this works, <laughs> well, I mean, it couldn't possibly work. He's got queen g4 there. Um, well, I'm in trouble. We got trouble in River City. So I'm not sure. I'm in extreme time pressure and not sure what to do. It's not the best combination. Yeah, I think my opponent's got it. Whatever their rating, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to try to liquidate something so that I have half a chance at drawing this, but yeah, it's not going to hold. Yep, so they see the obvious. Um, all right, fine. Whatever. That happens. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff there. Rick, yeah, that Rick hitting the queen thing looked interesting. I'm not sure, maybe I could have rearranged my queen behind my rook instead of in front of it. Maybe I had time to do that. All right, let's play a gambit. So where's the knight going? Could somebody, well, that's a metaphorical question about asking somebody to explain where that's going. If this were an unrated game, I would just ask to just get the conversation moving here. But um, yeah, no, that knight's not going anywhere interesting. Um, that does stop bishop g5, that's true. Wait, oh, I actually did play the gambit, so it makes sense that I have... I was going to comment how similar this is to a Smith-Mora, and then I realized, wait, I actually did play the Smith-Mora, despite having reservations against it. Uh, I played it. <laughs> Oops. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this plays out. Maybe I need to get bishop f4 on the table soon. Um, or, yeah, had I done that last turn, that just would get hit by the knight, so maybe that's not so critical here. So now are we going to see, like, queen, well, queen e7 would drop the rook. This move, and I still have some kind of vague pressure. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the shot I just lined up accidentally. All right, nice. Um, do I do rook takes? Rook takes looks nice. It just gives up three pieces, one of them being a rook for a queen. Um, or I could take on b7, and who knows what I got lined up next there. Um, uh, wow. This is tricky, I think. Um, whatever, we'll just do the thing that is easier, that doesn't require a ridiculous amount of calculation. Um, yeah, I was not, oh, I'm sorry, king d8, I just take the knight. <laughs> well, okay, I beat an 1100, guys. Um, but yeah, when you get this late into the tournament, only the strong players keep competing. So ratings kind of don't matter here. Somebody who's rated 1100 and somebody who's rated 2600 could both play some pretty good moves. Uh, okay, fine. We'll play c5. We'll take the d4 square. Try to play bishop g4. Um, 
stuck out of this first. Uh, can I get my opponent to play a4? There is a4. Alright. Um, <sighs> I should have a plan here. A plan would be so nice. Alright, fine. Whatever. We'll just we'll blockade the center. And then maybe come back after this guy. My opponent's playing well. I have a feeling I've seen this position before. Possibly even seen this opponent before. I think this is following the moves of one of my over-the-board games, in fact. Which is kind of nuts. Although that might have been a blitz game. Um, which also means I need to work on my repertoire. As I always do. But this is just kind of sad. Um... I'm assuming rook c1 will strike at some point. Um, wait. I take here, and then I've got bishop d5. There we go. Yeah, well, part of the reason that the work never ends is because I'm never actually doing enough of it. Like, if I actually buckled down and spent a year just memorizing openings and learning that stuff, I'd probably get a lot farther uh, than just occasionally doing whatever it is that I do. So I really don't have the discipline for it right now. And it shows. It definitely shows. On the flip side of that, that means that my games are fun and whimsical and unpredictable here which kind of works for an online format, but doesn't quite work so well for real-life matches. Like, online I could just play a game, and it's a fun blitz game, and, you know, somebody wins, somebody loses, or it ends up being a draw. Um, so, and you can get on past the game and go look at, like, here's the end game, here's the middle game, all the fun stuff that could have happened. Um, wait, can I not hunt that down? I'm kind of missing something here. I don't think this pawn... Oh, there's the shot. Oh, I've seen... Yeah, all right, this looks better, though. I think my over-the-board game I won by some lucky stroke. But here, I've had a lot more luck. Um, but yeah, in a Blitz game online, you can just play the game and not obsess over the fact that you missed something in a silly Blitz game. Um, over the board, you kind of have to live with your decisions if you're playing a slower game. Um, kind of have to find a way to make your decisions work. Or, um, I don't know, make the best of whatever situation you end up in. So worst case here, I'm getting multiple, oh, he's just giving up the pawn. Getting multiple pawns for my piece. Um, well, okay, fine. Yep. Yeah. Ambitious. That's a good name. So, yeah, I I always play with an increment. Here I'm not playing with an increment. Uh, here I'm also narrating. I don't really care what happens. But we try to make it fun. Um, yeah, no, I had a good game there. Probably if I'd cared a little bit more and played a little more cautiously, things could have turned out better. But I didn't. It's not what happened. And these people have much better chances than I do at actually getting a trophy in this event, so... You know, we'll just see what we can do. Um, 
Now, I wonder if knight h5 is something I should be concerned about here. Wait, why did I do that? This bishop's not going anywhere useful from there. Why did he do this? I can take this. I know typically this f3 knight is useful, but that one was pretty awful. Um, and yes, he has shut out my bishop, so he is temporarily up a piece. But d5 is kind of a target, and I can get my pieces out of this mess. But yeah, there's always a ton of theory to learn. Um, so you can either view that as an obstacle or something to enjoy. Or both. <laughs> um, and I'm probably in the both phase of that. In that like, it's always cool for me to see the masters playing their games. Uh, it's always frustrating me to me to play the actual game and realize that I don't know nearly as much as my opponents do. Oh, um, I don't know why, like, yeah, pushing Z is how you turn on Zen mode. And it should stay in effect. And maybe there's some issue depending on your browser or depending on whether you have cookies enabled or I don't know what. I'm not really a web expert. Um, all right, do I sack the knight? Because sacking the knight looks super fun. Um, I, yeah, let's do it. That looks fun. He played quickly. He played h4 with such confidence. I'm sure he'll play the follow-up with just as much confidence. Won't well, hesitate for even an instant here. <laughs> now, as to whether hesitation might be warranted, that might be a different matter. All right. Check. Well, funny how, oh. Uh, we're gonna bookmark that and move on. <laughs> that kind of makes up for the last game. Yeah, no problem. Worst case, like if none of that works, you could always um, take the style sheet uh, for Lee Chess and go make your own style sheet and user style it. Which is going to be a ton of work, but you could do that if somehow you're using some software that somehow doesn't remember that setting. Um, here, let's play this. Of course. Of course we play the Gioco Piano, and we play the Pianissimo. The thing where you hope that your opponent falls asleep and many just do. All right, so. My opponent's problem is that I've played this quite a few times, so I might be able to actually come up with some ideas. I'm used to opponents um, being very confused in this and used to finding tactical miracles that get me out of nonsense here. Um, and we'll see if I can be lucky again today. So he's preparing a sacrifice of some sort. And, you know, I think I'll just try to take some dark squares. Um, I'm debating, do I just push d5? That seems terribly stupid here. I uh, just, I myself am out of ideas in this position. I could do queen c8, queen h5, queen e8. Doesn't really go anywhere. Um, let's just try to build up to push d5. He surely doesn't intend a queen trade here, because I've got the more solid pawn structure. Um, are we going to see... Oh, that's not c4. That is not c4. 
All right. Um, no, that's a good move. So I'm going to try to open the E file and maybe not get my king exposed. Um, we'll see how that goes. Well, it's not the E file, but some file might open. Um, all right, so I've actually closed the queen side, so my king is safe. And my opponent's king is on the king's side. And yes, I have doubled pawns, but if that's all we're going to base this entire game around, is who's got the doubled pawns, then there's a lot more we're not thinking about. Ah, <sighs> be nice to push f5 if I could. Um, do I push g6 here? It seems risky. Whatever. We'll live with the risk. It's a super exciting pawn push. Um, right, so that was the concern. But I don't think that's going to crack my position. Oh my goodness. What is my opponent smoking? <laughs> and where can I get some? So I'm probably going to end up dropping the A-pawn and getting the C-pawn, if I've calculated this right. Again, I'm in extreme time pressure. Again, I'm just going to lose on time, but we've made an attempt. Um, he shouldn't even take this. Like, my threat to take on E4 is kind of hollow. My threat to take on e3 is a little bit less hollow. Um, so, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, other than shuffling. Um, Sorry for the lack of commentary. Just give me a moment here. All right, we'll take it. Whew. Yeah, no, those positions are tedious as heck. Because there are no weaknesses in white's position. It's just that white doesn't really have any advantages either. I say as I play into the same exact sort of position. <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, I guess I just have this position on the brain. I should be careful not to do this, because I kind of hate it. Um, either color. Alright, do I take? Sure, why not? Alrighty. 
Navy then. Um, that's kind of weird. Why would my opponent castle queenside here? Check out Bolgan's book on e5. Really nice attacking ideas for black and Italian. Oh, yeah, I should check that out. Considering how much I play this stuff, I should actually try to study it a bit more than I do. Um, and if there are new ideas, by all means, I should learn from other people's experiences uh, instead of from my own. Um, oh god, this is... How did I get this awful position? All right, so they're going to play like f6 here or something. Or they're just going to let me develop my pieces, question mark? Um, I guess they take h3. I am kind of opening that up. Wow, a free tempo. I did not deserve that. So this lets me actually play knight f5 without dropping a piece. Um, Put the piece on the open file. And like I said, this doesn't really offer white any advantage, so why did I play it? Um, I don't know. I do not know. I guess the only thing I got going for me is this cute little fork. Um, I guess if like he plays that rook there, I got this cute fork instead. Um, like literally the only thing I had going for me in that position was the possibility that my opponent might blunder. But evidently I'm pretty good at that, so might as well do some angle shooting. Um, all right, so they're preparing rook f4. Let's stop rook f4. All right, rook e8's the threat. I considered playing rook e8 first and then realized, well, he just plays king c7 and I don't have a threat anymore. So... Let's execute the threat, and then go take his knight. And I don't care what his rating is, I can win this upper rook. Now, whether I do win it might be a different matter, but I could win it. I should win it. Knowing my luck, I'll find some way to flub it, but... Um... Let's pretend for a second that I'm good at chess. Might take some imagination, but um, I believe in you guys. I believe you guys can believe in me to believe in whatever. All right, so he concedes. Nice. Yeah, that's a good grinding position, whatever that means. I don't find it interesting, though. Like. I've never found any favorable imbalance in that position. It's just grinding. That's all it is. And I get move, or, move ordered into it. So I should try to do better. Um, so no joke is saying that like when you're playing this stuff, just play knight f3. Because that's what they don't want to see is knight f3. Um, Now, I've always played the four pawns, so I don't actually know this line. Um, 
but I guess this is probably okay. Maybe? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> um, so the big idea is like bishop d3 or knight d3 or something, right? Like, what am I even doing? Okay. Wait, this is where I play c5, right? I found an imbalance that isn't necessarily um, worse for me, so we'll try playing for it and see what happens. Um, I should castle before I get denied that possibility. Um, I really want to take that, but that doesn't help me undermine this pawn at all. So, wanting and doing should be two different things here. Um, now he's got three pieces piled on my d-pawn, so I should try not to lose it. Actually, he's got bishop d3, and he just wins my d-pawn, so I should probably just push it right away. Of course, now I've exposed this tactic on the long diagonal. I am so good at this game. Um, so yeah, if he just finds bishop d3, which he doesn't, then he's probably much better there. Um, but now we get to actually play a nice grinding game where both of us have no idea what's going on. All right, so the threat is knight b3. Um, let's just get my queen out of here. If rook b8, then I can take the damn pawn, and uh, if not, maybe I can promote something. Wouldn't that be cute? Um, all right, this is a double attack. I guess it forces him to either take... Well, he's not going to get bishop d5 in ever, so... Bishop f5 is inevitable, but might not work. Um, he's probably going to take c3 here first. And then I take on e6 immediately and things get messy. Or he doesn't take and I just win the pawn. But I don't think my target's the pawn. I think I just want to promote right in the center of the board while his queen's still there. So like, if I could push c7 and then take his queen and promote to a queen... That might be a good move. Um, it's probably not happening that way, but um, something like that would be good. Oh, I should have just taken... I distracted myself. I distracted myself in a terribly stupid way. Whatever. Alright, so... Um, I can live with this position. Now whether I can actually uh, complete the game um, before my time runs out is a different matter, because I forgot we had a clock this game. Um, So I'll probably lose this on time, but I tried to win. Oh, never mind. Now we're just upper rook. This is pretty good. Yeah, I'll take this over what I had earlier this game. Alright. 
I might have a chance here, guys. All right. Nice. I gave him that check so that he wouldn't go chasing after my rook on b7. Or if he did, I could place my rook on b7 on b5. And then try to find a way to checkmate him. Um, with my rook standing on b5. So yeah, that spite check toward the end wasn't just out of spite. It actually served a practical purpose. Alright, let's get this going. Got another Karo on the board. Um, okay. Didn't expect that capture. Maybe I should expect that. I don't know how this line goes. Other than, like, the main, main line here. But, um... Let's have some fun, shall we? Oh my goodness. He does realize I'm not castling that way, right? You don't push your pawns in that silly manner. So this bishop's actually kind of useful. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but this is kind of exciting. Okay. I take a thing, you take a thing, I take a thing, I check, I take many things. All right. Well, I think we got him out of book. So the question is, can I make it into the top 1,000 before this tournament ends? Gotta set expectations high, guys. All right. I've never before had it be this challenging to get into the top 1,000 of the tournament. Um, we've got quite an event here. Um, geez. I think d6 is correct despite looking wrong. Um, bishop takes is certainly incorrect. So normally white would have a lot more to play for here, um, but all black's pieces are active and white's pawn structure is falling apart at the seams, and this is only getting better. So if I could just get my rook over to g6, we'll just call it a day there, you know? I probably can't get my rook to g6. It's probably too much to ask for. Um, so if he takes the free pawn, then I get a free knight. Um, well, we found a way to get a rook over to g6. Um, it wasn't what I originally planned, but, you know, sometimes you have to be flexible. <sighs> so how am I not winning this? This looks very winning. This looks very, very winning. Um, the problem is there's no uh, mating attack here. Well, we'll just put the rook there and see what happens. You also play this as black. Oh, that's good fun. Um, I 
am super confused what's going on. Wait, can I just take this? No, that doesn't win material. Um, I think this is a key to winning material here. Because after that move, instead of trading knights, I keep my knight on the board. And now I've got a knight, a rook, and a queen um, all attacking. And now I've got mate in one. So I might be down two pawns, and you might have a protected past pawn that I can't stop. But um, I've got mate in one, so uh, we'll take it. Um, and I guess I have to give credit uh, to a game from 20th century where Fisher had a similar like pawn pawn this thing going on where his opponent just couldn't get his pieces around. I'm sure that sort of thing happens all the time at top level, like at least master play and better, where there's just too many pawns and the king can't escape the mating attack. Um, I'm sure the Polgar book is full of those, too. Which reminds me, I should try to finish the Polgar book. Alright, I don't know this line, so I'm going to botch it. Um, I should probably learn something about it at some point. Um, so I've probably flubbed this beyond recovery already. I do have the bishop pair. So that's not terrible. Oh, I've got the bishop here in an open position. Um, and I got my bishop on the long diagonal. Uh, yeah, we're going to tuck the king away. And then try to find some good tactics here. Um, I guess I don't feel like giving up the a pawn. And I only spot that because I was planning rook d6, and rook d6 doesn't quite work there on its own. Um, yeah, I saw that a second too late. Whatever. At least now I don't have a knight to contend with. What? Excuse me? Bishops of opposite colors is plan. All right. I can live with that. I'll allow it. Um, Alright, let's do the cheesy thing. See if he plays rook f7. If he plays rook f7, I get this nice little check on the back rank. In any other case, I don't have such an attack, so... Um, just need to run away with my king once he checks me. Oh, well, that's cute. Bonus points for that cute attack. That is super cute. Um, I'm not sure what to do. Because he's cut all my pieces off sides here. I could exchange rooks, um, not up enough material for that to be a winning attack. All right, we're going to unbox my king. Oh, ironically, that's not even hanging. Holy moly. That is awesome. That is one of the cooler tactics I've ever executed. I'm going to have to remember that one. Because it worked. That worked super well. Alright, fine. We'll play it out at my opponent's insistence. Um, not even mad they're playing it out. Not even. Because this has been quite a journey so far. 
got no reason for me to expect that I would play this accurately. Um, yeah, I don't want to seal the king in that way. All right. So be it. Now he's being a little obstinate. I can't blame him for being mad, but I don't understand what he attempts to gain by it. All right. We'll take it. We'll take the win. Oh, there are many Polgar books. I'm talking about the big one. No, you're right. Judith did release this awesome book about um, her experience with the game. With all these wonderful narratives and fantastic games to go along with it. I've got to recommend uh, Judith's book very highly. Um, well, so much for my long diagonal trap. He saw right through it. I tried. Can you blame me? Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can blame me for that. But, um, but it was fun to try. Okay, and what is this? Uh, just develop my pieces. Try not to lose in a similar manner to... You know, I probably am losing a piece here somewhere. I'm definitely losing a piece here. Oh, uh, that's great. That is karma. All right. Whatever. It was a cool game. It looked cool. Boy, do I deserve this. Um, Alright, we'll attempt to develop a piece without hanging everything. Um, so yeah, now I'm just dropping the pawn in a7. Could have been a lot worse. And possibly I'm getting the pawn back after queen b8 or something anyway. Um. Hmm. Yep. This is not going well. <laughs> um. Well, I am getting super cramped. I'm going to try to trade a little bit of material to get some breathing space. And in doing so, probably accelerate my demise at the hand of my opponent's army. Um, but, you know, I tried. Um, here, let's put my king here. That looks safe. What can I play? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yep. It's my catchphrase, don't wear it out. Although I've probably already worn it out, so what can you do? Um, crap. <laughs> oh, this is not going well. Uh, okay. Um... Sure, that looks fine. Everything's under control. Other than the things which are not. Um, yeah, let's get out of there. Jeez. All right, finally he exchanges something. For some reason. I don't even know why. Oh, I have some idea now. I'm very close to hanging my everything. This might work, but probably doesn't. But everything else does not work, so we're going to go with the thing that probably fails. I'll take some chance over no chance. All right. 
Um, oh, that's pinned. It's not going very far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see that. I'm not sure what I can do, but I see it. At least we got that much. Um, yeah, this is going to hurt a lot. Okay, that doesn't make sense. So I might have actually survived this ridiculous attack with 16 seconds remaining. I'm sure I'll play perfect chess and just win it. And um, in doing so, demonstrate some point. Need to play a perfect game, no pressure. I'm probably not winning this. The more I look at it. Just trying to get my rook over to C2. Probably not going to get to C2. All right, we'll concede it. Well played. Yeah, at least my opponent played well. Here we go. I'll take this one. I finally played a good opening. Oh, here we go. The double pawn push. Here, let's just do the whole four pawns thing. This is amazing. This is so good. Alright. Which means I'm going to find some spectacular way to blow it. Um, we can only settle for the best blunders in this game. No small inaccuracies. We're going to go all out and find a way to make some mega cosmic blunder that like throws the free rook that we won. It's going to be amazing when we find the right way to um, throw this game. Uh, in the meantime, we'll just try to play some good moves. We've got to build up suspense. Make it look like I'm not going to blunder this. Um, I'll take there. Because honestly, I'm not seeing how I could blunder this, like, to the point of just completely throwing the game. I'm sure I'll find a way, but I'm not yet seeing it. So we'll just play a cautionary, a uh, cautious move there. Um... All right, screw it. He's played h5. I'm done with cautious moves. Let's have some fun. All right, he's got my king wide open. What? Excuse me? What's that? Okay. Well, I guess I was wrong. I guess I did not find a way to blunder that after all. I got a lot of yellow games here. That's kind of cool. Just need to do that more often. And we'll take first place in no time. Please? Oh, come on. Why wimp out? D4 is the fun line. Why would you not play it? Why? Do you not like fun? A lot of players who play this don't like fun. Granted, when I play that, I get in lots of um, very confusing positions. But, you know, that's where the adventure is. Um...
Screw it. We'll let him take me here. And he declines. Interesting. Well, I don't feel like taking that knight. It feels like a trap. Let's do this first. That knight's going to be there a turn from now, probably. Um, all right, it's still there. Just try to open the center while his king is still standing in the center. And if I can do so, maybe good things can happen. Um, I do recognize that this diagonal is open. That's why I hesitate so much before making any of my moves here. That bishop used to be on this diagonal. Obviously, with the uh, um, with my knight controlling b3, this instant, this instant he can't do bishop b3 without me taking it. Um, but on some future turn, that might be a possibility. So, just trying to play a little cautiously here before I throw all caution to the wind. Okay. Well, I'm confused. Why would my opponent play this way? I do not understand. Alright, we'll take that. Which puts this knight on f3 on pre and he still can't play bishop here to pin this because my knight covers that this instant and i'm threatening rook e8 so got a threat of rook e8 got a threat of taking the knight um yeah we're just gonna play this just feels right you know Sometimes you can calculate everything, sometimes you just play. Especially in Blitz, you just play things. Alright. Well, as long as his pieces are still in the back rank, I'm up three pieces. So, um, and this bishop's on the side of the board, so maybe I'm up four. Depends how you count it. Yeah, being up four pieces is kind of nice. Alright, we're going to bookmark that, because that was actually a fun game. Or at least it is of some interest to people. Um, like, you can improvise in positions you haven't seen before. It's perfectly okay to do so. And while in a slower game I might rec against, recommend against it, in a blitz game, by all means, just have fun with it. If you can't have fun, then like, why are you playing blitz? To demonstrate that you're superior to other people at playing in a speedy game, I guess? I don't know. I guess some people are into that. Rather, I know some people are into that. They like demonstrating that they're good at the game. And Blitz is a good way to show to many opponents that they are good. Um, but, you know, just kind of have to have fun playing the game too. Sometimes throw caution to the wind and see where, where things land. Um, So we're going to stop bishop g4, only because that is really powerful and I don't have anything to stop it um, other than what I just played. Um, 
So I was debating this whole time knight a3 to b5 or knight a3 c4. Turns out that's what I'm actually going to end up doing. Um, unless, like, bishop d4 somehow ends up being a good move, but that wouldn't work unless he moved to the a8 rook. Um, I don't see that happening. But yeah, we have a resourceful opponent on our hands today. Well, I say that, but do I mean it? Um, I don't like pawn grabbing. I used to really like it, but um, now oftentimes I'll take a plan over having a pawn. Okay. Well, that's exciting. It's too bad that's not a queen trap. I did look and see if there was a way to perform a trap, but I don't see one. Um, well, this is shaping up, though. Like, I guess I drop this pawn if I play bishop here. Um, might not be bad. Oh, I'm so close to dropping this knight for nothing. This is confusing. This is so confusing. I really don't understand what's going on in this position. I'm trying to not drop uh, this pawn on e4. And he's putting his queen in a good position to try to force me to drop it. So... Um, all right, he's pinned my bishop. If he takes e4, I can take his knight. If he takes my rook, well, I'll leave the rest as an exercise for the viewer. Um, but there were tactics there. Uh, okay, there's still tactics here. Jeez, what a mess. <clears throat> what a mess. Oh shit, whatever. I did it on purpose. Maybe, probably not. Yeah, I'm sure I have some fantastic initiative for my knight. It was totally a sacrifice and not me just blundering a piece. And we'll demonstrate that any move here, any second now, we'll see all the compensation for the piece I blundered. Um, it's just going to materialize on the board as some kind of amazing attack. Now what might be true is I might have rattled my opponent a bit, who probably didn't expect me to just give up material. There we go. See? We had it covered all along. No sweat. Alright, so now I need to roll my queen side. Um, just be careful to put my... oh! I forgot, he's in time pressure. Well, that's strange. Usually I'm the one in time pressure. So we'll play this angle as best as we can. Yeah, sorry, I did forget that like before that end game, I did glance at the clock and see I had more time than he did. And I promptly forgot about it because usually I don't try to think about that. But if the time situation had been reversed, 
there's a good chance I might have conceded right then and there. Um, all right. Huh. Okay. I don't know why he wanted to put his queen there. <laughs> Uh, I know now. I know. Good gravy. Can't I look like one move in advance? Can I see like hanging pieces before I hang them? <sighs> that would be a super nice superpower to have. Oh my goodness. Why did I do that? Well, we're going to try to win this somehow. Um, just need to put all our pieces on their best squares and hope that we outplay our opponent. That's basically all there is to it. Uh, it's going to be a difficult challenge. Let's see if he takes it. Probably he does. Because it does simplify the position a little bit. Um, I am taking the c5 square either way. The only question is, do I get other squares in addition to c5? Um, Next question is, where do I put my freaking pieces? <laughs> oh dear, what a mess. All right, we're gonna throw all the caution to the wind because you know, I've already lost a pretty important pawn. So there's really not much to risk here. Um, what, am I going to doubly lose the game? Probably not. You can only lose it once, so might as well lose it in style. Um, Alright, we'll try to put pieces on good squares. Maybe put some pressure on the center. I don't know. With the queen on d7, I can't really push f5 anymore. Um, I don't know how much I'm giving up by giving up that option. Um, so now he's going to try to find some way for his knight to hit my rook. If he puts the knight on uh, a3, my bishop takes it. And then we get an opposite color bishop endgame. Um, probably just take it here, right? So yeah, there's our end game. That's the one we were shooting for. Um, Yeah, I've missed a tactic there. I'm not going to get a second chance at it. That's too bad. At least I think I missed a tactic. I should have considered whether there was one or not before moving on. Um... Hmm... Rook f7 would drop a rook. Possibly I have a better move somewhere. Possibly dropping a rook is not my best move. Oh, right. Forgot about that. I kept cycling through multiple moves in my head and couldn't make a decision and saw the clock ticking. So made a move. Um, and it just ended up being one of the refuted moves that I already looked at. 
because that's how decisions work. Well, so I'm down to 18 seconds without any good moves at my disposal. Um, and down two pawns. And dropping uh, this endgame. Yep, as soon as he finds that and then trades queens and then checks me. Yep. Oh, well, we might be able to play this. It's got a little bit more confusing. Um, shit. No, I can't play that. I have no time. <laughs> Ambitious wins yet again. Uh, oh well. He deserved it. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to make the top 1,000. Usually I'm fighting for the top 500, but usually I put more time in than I've done today. All right. We're going to play something less ambitious and try not to get mauled. I admit that queen a3 thing was pretty cheeky and the only reason i fell for it is because i suck at time management um, if i could manage my time better in these games um, i wouldn't be falling for that stuff i could chalk it up to opening knowledge but who knows that opening who knows that sub variation I would contend it's probably not a knowledge question. Okay. So without having played my e pawn, I'm already pushing my f pawn. Well? So they say the reason not to push this stuff is because it blocks your bishop out. But, um,. I contend this position's closed, so my bishop being blocked out of the center isn't a deal at all. I'll take the space advantage for free, and if this ever, if this blockage becomes a problem, well, at that point, um, we find a way to get the bishop outside the pawn chain by putting it on this diagonal. But until then, I'll just take the free space. What? Excuse me? Well, this is a strange development. Certainly my opponent didn't plan this out. It might be okay, but it's strange as heck. Um, all right. I'm going to wager he didn't plan that one. <laughs> um, all right, let's try to win a knight. And I only mention that because I'm mostly sure that I'm getting some kind of concession out of this. Um, so, put the bishop on a good square. Yeah, maybe king d1 might have been more accurate. I guess he could still do it. Yeah. Um... Somehow this still feels right, despite like lots of things going on in this position. I think this is still a good move. Um, I really need an open line for my rook. 
or an open file, and there's my open file. This does have an obvious detriment that um, we can have to exchange bishops now. Oh, uh, whoa, really? Does that work? I think King C1 is forced. Yeah, I think he had to play King C2 afterward. All right. Well, I can play this. I might have some chances here. All right. Yeah, we definitely got some chances. All right. So we got some debate going on in the forums with somebody else there. Um, I forgot to play queen e2 on move 2. That completely ruins this idea. Um, so, okay, well, we've started the cheese. We might as well finish the cheese. Uh, I don't even get to do my cheesy bishop c2 thing because he's already pushed his pawn. I don't know why. Like, why would you go for that? Uh, um, why would you push g6 before it's necessary? There is some plan here, but I don't understand it. Are you really going to push h6? Um, okay, we'll just put the rook on an open file. Just pretend we're playing a normal chess game. Um, let's see what happens. Because I'm still not expecting h6. Alright, just put a knight and then a good central square, and then put a bishop on the long diagonal. Actually, I've got this, don't I? This looks fun. I might have played a good opening accidentally. I wouldn't wager too much that I have, because I think he's still... Wait, I'm sorry, king g7, I check him here. No, I've actually played a halfway decent game. Not my best game, but certainly not my worst. Um, Alright, whatever. And we'll just play this out. How bad could this get? We're up three pawns. I'm just going to try to checkmate my opponent. It's not going to work. But I have too much hubris here. So um, time to learn some humility. Well, my opponent's not cooperating with my whole let me go attack you thing. All right, do you want to double my pawns? My many, many pawns. Or do you have something else in mind? Um, there are still ways that I could manage to lose this. There are certainly are ways that I could manage to lose this. Alright, what 
let's get a passed pawn on this side. And hopefully not drop my rook. There's a check. <laughs> All right. Admittedly, finding the last few moves in this position is going to be tricky, but um, I think I can manage this somehow. The fact that I've got his king boxed out is kind of useful. I guess queen g5 or something. Yeah. That was a hard fought endgame. Kudos to my opponent for fighting it out. Alright, we're on a winning streak here. Which means probably I'll blow this game in fashion that I have blown the third game of winning streak quite frequently here. Um. Can we just not do this, this thing? Do we have to play this every time? All right, we got an interesting opening. Perhaps not the most reasonable move order, but we got something that looks like a chess game on the board. Um, I'm guessing queen f3. Actually, I don't have a good response to queen f3. So had I move ordered things a little better, perhaps that could have been in, in a saner way. I think I'm okay here. I think I got chances. All right. Wow. Um, I have opinions about this position. <sighs> Most of those opinions are probably wrong. So, uh, what? What's going on here? I was going to argue that my light squared bishop was not my best piece, but things are shaping up in a way that that, that bishop might actually be a good piece. So bishop takes, knight takes, and I get the bishop on an open board. If knight takes queen h4, uh, then knight f3, then I don't know, rook takes knight or something. Looks fun. Whatever is going on here, it looks fun. Probably knight takes knight is happening next here. Yeah. So, yes, I have doubled pawns, but um, I've got a central presence and got some open files to work with, so. It's kind of a wash. Um, if rookie won, I just take it. I guess if queen c3, I don't know what, something. This could have been thought out a lot better. I keep playing as if my opponent's move 
all at the same pace. This one's moving slower than most of them. Um, most of them move much faster, and I just find myself constantly getting into time pressure. So that's why I'm moving unnecessarily quickly here. Um, and in doing so, getting myself into all kinds of problems. But, I don't know, it relieves stress, if nothing else, for me to keep moving. Um... So I'm guessing queen c4. That's not queen c4. All right, so in these queen games, you generally want to get your queen like on the other side in front of the pawn so you're able to coerce the opposing queen to move out of the way. Here I've kind of inverted my roles in that my rook should be really behind my d-pawn and my queen should be elsewhere. So I got that completely backwards, but um, it seems to be working out in some strange way. Okay. Yeah, I don't think this queen takes c7's a threat here. That hurts. Huh. <laughs> He's not moving. All right, well, that's a tough break. Now, I played that um, queen d4, um, yes, to set up that discovered attack, but also because he has to move his king toward the corner. So that gains me a tempo for the later part of the end game where he probably needs his king in the center to stop my pawn. All right, let's do this. Well, okay. Uh, that was an accident. I did not expect that. Uh, Well, hopefully that one makes it into the opening explorer. Um, I don't think games of that uh, number of moves actually make it into the explorer, though. But that could be a fun cautionary tale. Um, so, I am super confused about this move order. I don't even know why. Like, there's nothing spooky about this move order. It's just somehow I got confused. Oh, I dropped a pawn. No, I didn't. It's not a pawn drop. It is a messy position, but that's another matter. Um, what do I do about my e-pawn? Do I actually have to duck like this? I don't have any way to stop knight c4, so I guess this is necessary. Um, I'm not going to drop this d6 square if I can help it. Uh, crap. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, do I have h6? Is h6 any good? Well, if it's not, I'm busted. Um... I don't have time to do anything other than h6 there. Hmm. Okay. Well, we've got this nice double pawn mass in the center. And what makes it strong is the fact that my opponent has a pawn blockading it. Um, so that's actually good for a rook end game to have that kind of weird pawn thing going on. Um, so I guard as many squares as I can, uh, I guess f7 and f8, and I'll be moving my rook to the second rank shortly. Oh, well, I better get to it, because he's threatening 
um, doubling his rooks on the sixth, which could hurt a lot. So I'd better not dally here. Oh, check that out. He's got to do rook six f3. Um, it's forced. So I'm trying to stop rook e1. Simultaneously, I'm trying to take on b2. Um, right, so... My bishop's not of any use after this, so let's trade into this end game. Um, yeah, that's fine. Let's see if I can get him to block his third rank so he can't play rook h3. If we can prevent rook h3, um, a lot of the tactical shots in this position sizzle out. If we cannot prevent rook h3, I just need to keep a good eye over all of his rook moves. Um, okay. That's strange. Yeah, no, I'll play this. I will definitely play this. Okay. I'm not sure how to proceed here. I think I just go for it. Taking on g5 doesn't actually help me, so. Um. Now it helps me, so we'll do it. Check. All right, this might take a second. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you can promote. Yeah, I'm not going to stop you from promoting. All right. Yeah, well played. Oh. Wow, this is addictive, isn't it? I can understand now how people could get sucked into this for six or more hours at a time. There's quite a rush there when the timer's ticking down. Um. Okay. This looks familiar. I've played a very similar position in an over-the-board tournament. Um, difference here is I've got a pawn on f4, and I'm not sure if that's good or bad. So I want to push g5 and stuff like that. Am I forced to do it? Yes, so we'll do it. That's, I mean, it feels sketchy, but what else can I do? My opponent doesn't have a dark squared bishop, so it would be their queen that hits me on the long diagonal, if anything hits me there. Um, all right, we have to liquidate. So I have to trade rooks on a1. Well, okay, I don't get this opportunity. Um, so we'll just take the long diagonal 
And the reason I'd have to trade rooks is because if I allow him to take on a8, then my queen cannot defend the rook on a8 and simultaneously defend the pawn on g5. So that's why we did what we did there. Um, this looks okay. I need to get my rook on an open file. So that could be the G file, that could be the E file. I need to make a decision and stick with it. Um, and I'm thinking the G file here. Um, although after that, now I'm reconsidering. This pawn racing down the E file sure looks scary. Whatever. Ain't no pawn gonna scare me. I should probably be scared. All right, fine. We'll close the position. Give my opponent everything he's asking for here. Um, and then inform him that what he's asking for really doesn't help him that much. Because I've got the open file, because this pawn's not going anywhere. Um, if I do that, he just does. Um, oh dear. Yeah, he does pawn e7. Oh, I'm sorry, it takes on g5. Taking on g5 is the obvious move here. Um, whatever. We'll have to liquidate now. I did manage to um, deflect my opponent's rook away from, or knight away from protecting this rook. Um, So you should just push and then wrap the, um, use the knight to pick up the pawn. There's no hurry to take it. And this is going to be a mess. Let's get the rook on an open file. I know it was on an open file, but I like this open file better. I mainly just want to see where this knight ends up. Knights are tricky pieces. <sighs> Knights are super tricky pieces. All right. Well, I did not deserve that at all. I'll take it. I did not deserve it. Huh. I wonder, am I still streaming? Yeah, I still am. I just didn't happen to make it onto that tournament page, because I guess they only feature so many people in the player name is streaming list at once. All right. So. Um, I 
guess I want to get my, I want to take an f6 somehow. Well, that kind of ruins my plan. Oh, oh, what's this? Okay, this is disgusting, but we're doing it. I've given up, well, I mean he had control of the long diagonal. I'm not giving it up, because I never had that, but I'm giving up the illusion that I had control of the diagonal. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to take the dark squares, and then I can come back and hit the light squares next. Um, These knights protect each other, and I don't want to take either one while the other one's still defending. Because um, I wanted that bishop to take my knight. Um, so now I've forced the bishop takes knight exchange. Or rather, now that that's happened, forced or otherwise, I can start building an attack using this advanced pawn. Um, doesn't mean my attack's going to be any good, but it means I can start. Bishop G, uh, Bishop E7 is kind of looking fun. I'm not sure it does much, but I don't think my other moves do any more than this, so we're going to do it anyway. I really want to get a, like, a rook on F4 or something. That's the dream. It's a million miles away, but it's the dream. Um... Okay. That's kind of interesting. I guess I have to take this. That's surprising. I don't know why he wouldn't keep his pawns together. Maybe there was some tactical shot I missed. Threaten mate in one. That might get his attention. And I don't know if this attack has produced anything of use. I am quite doubtful. So you can play g5. Um, ah, crap. Wait, no, I'm sorry. I do have d8 adequately hit. So I do get a free tempo here. Um, rook d7 comes with tempo. Because if he does this, I just win a rook. So I think we both hallucinated there. Um, okay, rook d7 still the threat. Even if he moves the king away, this is probably still the threat. Oh, rook e4. Yeah, you're probably right. I tend to miss that sort of rook lift. I generally am better at finding like tactics than finding strategic ideas. Like I can see a mate in one, but um, spotting something that like just elevates my rook so I could shift it over, um, chase the king. Um, that's a little bit harder for me. Oh, another French. 
An accidental French. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> uh, I was doing that to be silly, but uh, apparently my opponent was trying to have a little bit too much fun here. Okay, whatever. I guess he didn't want to play that game. <laughs> All right, fine, whatever. Try to focus. Okay, what am I doing here? What am I doing? All right, who did I just beat? Time will tell. <sighs> what a game. All right. We beat somebody who had Berserk in their name. Kudos to them. That was an exciting game. I've probably missed several mate continuations there, but I found one, so one's good enough. Dear God, why does everybody play this crap? Would it kill people to, like, learn a real opening? Why do I have to be the one taking the chances in these games? know if I care about the material I'm about to give up here. I don't know if I care. Whatever, it's just a night. Let's have some fun. Is it sound? Of course not. There's no way this could possibly be sound. Uh, does it lose instantly? Probably. Uh, but at least I'm playing a game. We're going to have an adventure, whether my opponent wants an adventure or not. Uh, adventure is probably not going to go much further than the gas station, but uh, we're going to try. We're going to use our imagination and pretend I've achieved something of import here. So if knight f4, I don't know. 
Oh, there's that too. Um, wow. Amazing. It's incredible how many ways this fails. Uh, that's pretty awesome. If I take on e3, he's got knight f3. Well, this might work. We're getting our adventure. <laughs> Holy moly. Have I... Uh, this doesn't work at all. Knight f3, queen f4, uh, pawn takes e3. Yeah. So... I'm just down a rook. It looked cool. Oh, I'm sorry. No, if, if pawn takes, then I have a check on e, h3. So maybe this works after all. Now, should it have worked? Probably not. But um, all right, our adventure has begun. And now we get an endgame. <laughs> so I chill out a little bit. Um, this is not a good endgame. Um, the more I look at that, this is pretty awful. Um, because I have no target to hit. If I had a target, this would be a lot more appetizing. Um, I think I found a target. Now, granted, I'm losing my king's shelter, but I need something to hit. Like, the rooks can easily outmaneuver the queen, so... Um, it's important to always have something to hit at. Otherwise, you will get mowed over. Um... Not sure if I should push D2 here. Well, let's give it a shot. It's the adventure we've all been looking for. Um, Now I just need to undermine all my opponent's pawns. What an adventure. Uh, good gravy. We got the adventure, guys. We got more than we bargained for. I guess he got that far, he might as well play it out to the end, but generally you try not to throw the game. I don't know. Doing things in time pressure is always tricky, but like that volunteering to trade both rooks for the queen was a pretty committal move. Um, certainly something he didn't have to do, but I guess in these marathons people do take chances. Here, let's take a chance. Let's play the Bowden Kazirtsky Gambit. Because, um, you know, this is super solid. This never, ever backfires. Assuming your opponent blunders. 
Um, I should have saved that for a turn. Okay, I don't understand what happened there. Like, I'm getting a pawn back. That really wasn't a reason to resign. Uh, let's do this. I mean, it looks like my pawn's hanging, um, but really I'm threatening some more profound stuff if he takes my knight and then takes my pawn. Alright, now my pawn's defended. So I'm trying to get some sort of favorable exchange here. Um, it might take a while, but in the meantime I have a space advantage. Um, Each time we go through one of these kinds of shuffling, I gain a tempo. So I just keep gaining tempi and waiting for something positive to happen. Um, we'll see how bad that is in just a second. Oh, I'm probably sacrificing material here uh, against g5. That wasn't intentional, but might have worked. Um, My opponent wants to trade into an endgame? Do I have that right? Let me just make sure I'm hearing this correctly, that they want an endgame. They can't possibly want it as much as I do. Oh, never mind. It didn't matter after all. But yeah, endgames are fun. Endgames are super fun. Like, if they can make chess just an endgame, I probably prefer that form of chess over the normal one. Because there's so much you could do with so little. It's really an art. And a science. And yes, I guess you could argue the same about the game on a macroscopic level, and that, like, this art and science stuff applies to all chess and not just endgames, but really, study some endgames. They're really cool.
Yeah, rook c6 is happening. Or not. Rook c6 would have been cautious and sensible. Good gravy. Whatever we've gotten ourselves into now is anything but cautious. Anything but sensible. Um. Oh, crap. I should have calculated this better. Um. If it happens, I'm okay, but that was very lucky. Um. Probably cannot overstate how lucky that encounter was. Um. Games are hard. <laughs> End games are super hard. All right. Woo! We've got 10 minutes left. We've almost made the top 1,000. That was my goal. And the only reason um, I continued playing into whatever hour of the tournament this is is to satisfy that goal. Because it somehow feels rewarding even though it's just a number. I mean, yeah, it's also good to be back in the hang of just playing some games online. Haven't done that in a long time. But, um, I don't know, part of it is just the excitement of playing stronger players. Um, uh, then I would normally get When I'm playing through the auto pairing system in the lobby, usually, I don't know, people don't fight as hard as they do in this marathon. Oh dear. Well, that's exciting. That is exciting. <laughs> I have sacrificed a bee pawn. No, I didn't hang it. It's a sacrifice. And how do you know that? Because of my rating. Would a player rated 2,000 on this server just hang a pawn for no reason? Yes. But, you know, I have to make it entertaining. So, um, where do I put my pieces? Oops. Yeah, a lot of the moves I just looked at have... They hang pieces in many different ways. This one doesn't seem to immediately hang a piece, although after knight d4, knight e2, I could be hanging my queen. So if he plays knight d4, I should probably move my queen, or king. I'm probably not going to make the top 1,000, because that would require me to win some more games uh, before the tournament clock expires. That's probably not happening. Um, wait. Okay, so let's line this up. He's going to castle. Okay. Surely now he's going to castle. Can't put off castling forever. Okay. Really not sure what his game is here. What's his plan? Yes, all my pieces are poorly placed. Um, geez. What a messy position. 
if I can improve the placement of this bishop, maybe something can happen that's not completely uh, in my opponent's favor. All right. Um... I should exchange queens, but I'm too stubborn at this point. I'm trying to win. If I wanted to draw, I'm already down two pawns. A queen exchange could help me maybe draw this. But we're playing to win it, so we're going to take some unnecessary risks. Yeah, I am dead lost here. All right, whatever. Did I say my goal was to win that game? I meant the next one. Let's try to win the next one. All right. It's a good thing he played c3, because I forget the line with queen b3. I could maybe remember it, um, but maybe I wouldn't remember it. Oh god, really? Have I blown this? This is amazing. <laughs> well, okay. Clearly I don't deserve to get the top 1,000 places if I can't get a decent position out of this opening. I should play better than this. I should play much better than this. Um, so, yep, we're going to do this exchange. I'm still down a pawn. Try to get my rook out of the corner. He gets a tempo to castle. All right, screw the bishop. Let's get some pawns. Let's get something rolling. Pretend I had a plan. We can't let him have two right past pawns that are racing down there, so I have to take. Um, and I don't know. He is up a point. If you look at that material count on the right side of the screen, you'll see he's definitely up a point. Um, but we've got emotional compensation, which is not a real thing. Oh, I could take on d5. Why did I not take in there? All right, so now we're up material. Whew, and apparently have almost, no, actually trapped a knight. It's just we can't capture it. Um, all right. Oh, crap. I played the one move which hung a rook. Well, I shouldn't take it too personally if I manage to blow this tournament. Um, in a way, this game might be the best way to de-stress from the events of the rest of the tournament. Um, the fact that, like, even a single move could throw the game wildly in one player's favor. I could have taken this knight. Didn't even see it. Not even looking. Didn't even see it. All right, let's take that knight. Um, just get the pawn wall moving. I have reasons to believe in these pawns. Um, all right, do I play c2? All right, rook d8. I don't know. Something's happening in this position. Something super weird is happening. 
Um, yeah, I don't know about knight d4. Knight d4 doesn't look right. I think he might have had something there. I'm going to have to look at this afterward. Because I don't think I'm going to have time for another pairing. Okay. Uh, let's play this accurately if we can. Yeah, one minute's probably not going to be enough for me to finish a game. We'll try. Damn it, we'll try. I'm surprised that we even can get a pairing this late into the event. One minute, 30 seconds left, and it still doesn't give me a pairing. Oh, that hurts. We are... Okay, pairings are closed. Thank you. That probably could have been done like a half a minute earlier in a much calmer way. So, okay, I'm feeling lazy at the moment. Let's have the engine do all the hard work. Because, um, yeah, something happened here. Um, I mean, once we've... Let's say we actually exchange the rooks intentionally. Okay, knight d4 apparently blows it. Um, oh, I could have just taken the knight. Whoops. <laughs> right? Yeah, b3 works also. But taking the knight was so much easier to understand. No, I'm sorry. This actually wins by force. Yeah, never mind. Uh, I could have taken this pawn. Whatever. Um, what else happened here? Yeah, so once we had this... Okay, so missing the free knight. Oh, okay, b4 is not a blunder. Exchanging that's fine. Hmm. I was just convinced that, like, somehow c2 or something like that would work here. Apparently not. Apparently it's nowhere close. Like, if I play c2, that surely just throws the game, right? No. It does not throw the game. King f2 makes some sense. Oh, so I take here. And why not rook a1? Rook c3. Oh, this pawn races. Okay. So, yeah, I thought I saw something there, and apparently I did. Uh, b5 here was a blunder. Um, yeah, dropping the rook was stupid. But overall, an interesting game. Not an accurate one. Not something worthy of being bookmarked. Uh, though we did get an adventure. We definitely got the adventure we were looking for. All right, congratulations to everybody who completed the event. The 2019 Spring Marathon. I missed the confetti because I just came back from analyzing a game, but uh, trust me, the tournament has ended. Lance has won it. So congratulations to Lance. Um, yeah, I saw the Llama Lord and CRP Tone had an exciting game yesterday. So congratulations, uh, CRP Tone, for taking second. And can't say I've ever seen Half Natty around until recently, but man, that's quite a showing. Interesting that our top three players um, are not GMs or IMs. That's pretty cool. Uh, so what were the standings at the top? So I made it to the top 1,000. I made my goal. So yay me. Um, 
So the disparity here, oh my god. Wow. Lance must have powered through it the entire event, um, including these streaks of green numbers here. Uh, like, he had some down moments in this event. He went berserk awful lot here. That's amazing. Um, oh, goodness. Look at all these streaks of non-yellows. Um, yeah, all these green ones here indicate draws or losses. Or just a win that's not in a winning streak. Um, yeah, that's painful. He's trying to play at the top is super challenging. But that is quite the disparity in the top two spaces. Um, yeah, the rest of it... I'm guessing most people didn't manage to play the full 24 hours. Or didn't go berserk as much. Um, yeah, there's Penguin. Made 10th place. Well done. All right, so with that, um, I know I entitled this stream uh, Spring Marathon and Spring Rolls, and I'm going to go enjoy some Spring Rolls. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Have a good night.